The question many people have is, when is Diddy going to face charges? Is he going to face charges? Will he be arrested at some point in time as uh, the investigations, uh, two federal investigations, uh, continue to dig deeper into allegations of trafficking and also uh, abuse? Uh, And now a lot of, well, accolades and things that uh, Diddy was very proud of that were given to him all being pulled back. His law firm exiting his life at the behest of Lady Gaga, of all people. Basically, the allegations are she gave an ultimatum, says it's Gaga or Diddy. Which one's it going to be? Can you imagine saying that sentence like 30 years ago? Gaga or Diddy? Who's it going to, like, what are they talking about? What is this? (laughs) Um, It's only going to get, it is crazier with the other names that are out there today. Um, they're gone. Miami Beach revoking Sean Diddy Combs Day. I know the residents are very sad. Now the kids aren't off of school and they're not doing fireworks and they're not uh, getting oh, new kittens every week or on, on Diddy Digs. I think that was part of it, uh, making that part up. But Diddy Day was the thing. Uh, business relationships severed. Uh, stepped down as a role at Revolt TV. Grammy nominations and accolades uh, maybe redacted amid some of these uh, allegations. Mayor Eric Adams of New York City saying we want the key back to the city. So damn, he's not going to be able to go into uh, City Hall whenever he wants <laughs> with that giant key. Uh, and uh, Diddy also pulling all of his social media posts uh, over the last several years, including the uh, the uh, apology video. All this going on, what does it tell you about where this investigation is going uh, into Diddy? Going down. (laughs) I'm curious about seeing how far down it'll go. Um, Because what you're seeing now is you're seeing the vortex of groupthink uh, coming into place. And now that people feel empowered to say uh, what's on their mind, they're all saying it, they're all doing it. And the challenge for law enforcement investigators in this is who is actually legitimate and who's jumping on the bandwagon for self-profit? You know, Mm -hmm. human beings um, for hundreds of thousands of years as a species we're really really good at doing really really good things for each other and then you always you will always always part of our human nature have people come along and take advantage of everything when they can Mm -hmm. um and i think that's what we're seeing here is we're seeing a lot of extremely legitimate claims a lot of legitimate uh, accusations um that are being leveled against him but you're also having a lot of people jumping on that bandwagon seeing what they could profit from it from it as well so it'll that's I think it's a lot to sort through for law enforcement, especially if you have someone that's been in the public spotlight for so long and presumably from what we're seeing from the accusations, taking advantage of others for so long that there's a lot to sort through, especially as we as I keep mentioning, if we're potentially dealing with any sorts of human trafficking or or sex trade or drugs, there's a lot of tendrils that they want to make sure they take down with it. Um, and then they got to deal with immunity issues because everyone that's been dealing with this that are, are coming forward, I'm sure there's a lot of muddy water in their lives that they're trying to make plea agreements with, you know, to make them immune from saying things. I mean, so there's it's a lot for a team to deal with. How long, I mean, can it take sometimes for something like this? Because who knows what he's going to be brought up on, maybe RICO charges. Um, mm-hmm. But because some of these other things have uh, passed the uh, statute of limitations. But if we're talking about, uh, a RICO case, so some of these things can be brought in as evidence um, that have passed that statute. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pieces here, like you just said, that they're trying to deal with and figure out, okay, immunity, who's doing what, uh, what hand's doing what, um, and it's going to take some time. Uh, could this stretch out for years still before we actually see any charges against him, or it's something like this with this much being out of the public spotlight the video being out there and people really seeing and knowing more about this person factually, not just speculation wise, would would that lead to a, a quicker arrest if we're going to see one here or they just got his, their eye on him. They know where he's going to be at. And so they can take their time doing what they need. So I'm, I'm again, pure conjecture. Yeah. Guess. I'm guessing that we're getting closer to them making a move just because I, I think as the, as everything keeps falling down around him, I start thinking he's a flight risk. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're not, they're going to want to take him into custody at some point as well as I think what they're also doing is now that, now that they're starting to see, uh, some clarity through the fog. Cause when you first start doing an investigation, there's a lot of fog and you Mm -hmm. see little images here, here again, we're talking about doing visual stuff for people to understand. Basically, you know, everything's out in front of you, 
but you can't see, you can only see about this far because there's fog in front of you. The more you're doing the investigation, the fog starts clearing and uh -huh. all these data points start becoming more evident. And now they're probably really locked on with the major charges they're going to go for um, because the fog's cleared enough for that. And I think what happens is, is that some of these other potential potential potentialities of tendrils that are going out they're going to let those fall and not pay attention to those necessarily they just want to make sure they're going to go for the heavy hitting charges and then anything having to do with taking down networks of human trafficking mm -hmm. uh, those are going to be and i think as they're getting closer to that we're going to start seeing or arrests potentially happening i'm thinking sooner rather than later just because again i think you're going to start having flight risks with not just necessarily diddy but anyone else involved that's what I'm wondering. And, and, and when this, let's just assume it's going to go down at some point, uh, do you think this is going to be a, an event similar to what we saw when they raided both of his homes simultaneously? There was a reason they did that, to prevent mm -hmm. any sort of evidence being destroyed or whatever could possibly be there. It was simultaneous. We're going in there. If they're going to make arrests, if they do find this to be a ring of some sort, again, Diddy is innocent until proven guilty. I'll throw that out there. He has not been charged with anything sure. as of right now, but just assuming that they're going to make some sort of arrest and some charges here. If there's others involved in this ring, is that one of those things where, okay, two o'clock on Tuesday, whatever it may be, uh, we're going after everybody simultaneously to prevent anybody from getting away, basically. Yeah, this is why I think there's also might be a delay in this is the court. Anytime you have something, someone of notoriety like this that is being accused of so much and there's all these tendrils that are going out there and potential other big names that are involved in this and you're going to coordinate a simultaneous takedown of everyone and searches of all these locations that, I mean, think about it. You, you, if you search my house and your house, you know, it'd take them about an hour or two. Yeah. <laughs> Diddy's sprawling mansions, plural. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then anyone associated with him in that is going to take a lot of manpower resources, a lot of coordination, and maybe international coordination uh, with other locations, other venues. Um, that's also potentially why there's a delay in anything, because in order to execute, and if you're going to take one person down and not have the rest of the network fleeing for the, the hills or burning down their mansions to get rid of evidence, yeah. um, that is that is that requires a large effort. I think the longer it takes to see movement on this, the more shocking some of the people involved might be. Yeah. Is there ever consideration taken into any of this for... The risk of suicide. I mean, you're, you're talking about someone who is very, very high strung. Uh, you know, typically a lot of it does happen. We can't say it does not happen, but narcissists don't tend to do that on a high percentage level, but some do when they're really pushed into the corner. And I'd say he's being very much pushed into the corner. Basically his whole legacy, his whole life, everything is tumbling down. Diddy is not going to be remembered for what he has done musically uh over the last three decades he's going to be remembered for this uh at the end of the day this is what history is going to know him for and i'm sure he probably knows that too and of his friends and everybody walking away running away uh, i would think that the risk is up there for something like that to happen uh and is there an interest in going and getting him sooner rather than later uh as you know this, this pile this mountain of crap just continues to to rise and it will just continue to rise so they can only go at the tempo and pace that they, they can execute all these things. So they yeah. can't rush that. Um, so that's on the one side. On on the Diddy side with the legacy and the suicide, um, you, you said you said very powerful things there about this is what he will be known for. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to add one one little caveat to that. Yeah. That's what he'll be known for today. But. When And we've seen it with people that had these aha life epiphanies where, I mean, think so let, let's just play, let's play this hypothetical tape forward. Diddy all of a sudden has this aha epiphany and he owns it all. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know what? Oh my God. I have just realized I'm the most horrendous person on the face of this planet and I've damaged so much. I need to go to jail. I need to serve my time and I'm going to do all I can 
to serve not just all those I've injured and all I've hurt, but I'm going to create with whatever I have left of a foundation and throw all my weight behind, ensuring that this never happens again to another human being. And he spends the rest of his days doing that and creating music and doing things for charity fundraisers. It never takes a dime for all those things. And he uh, continually owns his behavior with transparency, openness, vulnerability, and he serves, 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 serves for the rest of his days. That will be a different thing had he do if he does those yeah. things. And so, so see what I mean? So yes, his legacy, if he's taken down today and doesn't own it, mm -hmm. will be exactly as we're seeing it today. But we can never project what's inside a here of a human being. I will say this. If he, if any human being can save themselves from their own path of destruction and they can do those behaviors, a great day's ahead. Um, I think if he gets clean and sober, if he's not already, that there's a chance there. But if he's not clean and sober, you're right. The the probability and potentiality of a potential suicide or self-harm or not owning it and being remembered as a horrendous human being is really high. Yeah. Because, yeah. because with chemical imbalances in the brain, we do really stupid things. And it prevents us from the healthy behaviors that can move us forward. And I mean, when you think about the impact he has and the reach he has, the the amount of good he could do, it could he could do a lot of great good. It won't ever undo the horrendous things he's done or potentially done or being claimed to know whatever. But he could make a dent and live a very very wholesome, productive life for others. But Time will tell, won't it? Time will tell. My, my, my question with that being, to go a little deeper on it is, if he were to do that, would it be coming from a place of genuine good, of this is what I truly want to do good, or I truly need to do this to rescue my image? I need to do this so people look at me in this certain light, not, uh, not just... Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, but I'm doing this more because it's all still all about me, still all about my image. And at the end of the day, if it's still all about him, but he does good, then good, you know, whatever. That's all in his mind and how he's being perceived. But I would, I would question that for someone who's lived a life like this thus far. He's into his, I believe, 50s now. Um, you know, is is there going to be that sort of a psychological shift? Can there be that sort of a psychological shift if? You've already been this kind of neurotic madman for all of these years. Uh, is that going to be an authentic shift? And I mean, does it really matter if it's authentic? There, there, there's one true test. That there's yeah. to me, there's only one way to really assess that. Is yeah. one uh, is you you must suffer. <laughs> it, this is not going to be painless. Yeah. And and the other big the other really really big test in this Tony, I think that it can you can see if there's a genuineness and sincerity and where where it's coming from is does he have an ask? No, in other words, is he begging? Is he asking for forgiveness? That is so you're doing it because you want something. If he just does the act, mm -hmm. shuts his mouth and just acts on the behalf of others mm -hmm. and suffers and owns it, that is someone who actually gets it. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 a very very painful journey that he'd have to go through. What do I think the likelihood of that is? Low. It's yeah. very low. These things don't happen every day. That's why it's why when they do happen, they they do make us inspired because when people we've seen it, these are people that become um, the, the most inspirational people that have ever come across. We, we've come across in history mm -hmm. because they they have fallen so far that they they crash when they hit the bottom. And 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 in all our minds, they think that that person should have been dead and destroyed. But all of a sudden they do these amazing things. And they never so – here's the thing is the ask, he can never – he cannot draw attention to himself. That's the thing. And, it's yeah. Him. Yeah. and so this is why it's a very, very challenging, tough ask. Um, and then maybe in the final year of his life, um, when someone finally decides that they decide we need to interview him to see what, what it was that changed him. And he humbly presents all the things only when asked what he did for others without an ask, without a gain. Um, again, so do I, so as you see, Robin always is the glass half full mm -hmm. of, there's always a possibility of, of great things happening. What do I think the likelihood is? Well, let's just look at history. How often does this happen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm running through my mind. I'm trying to think of someone who's 
who's fallen with such a, a horrible thud for doing such horrible things and found a way back up. Um, I'm, I wish I could remember who, uh, who this was. Uh, I just read it in a book and it was literally a, a very, a very similar case where they fell so far and they're acute. I, I'll, I'll try to, I can't, I'm horrible on remembering this name, but it was in one of the books I just read and he spent literally the rest of his days doing just what I described. I mean, I just, I don't yeah. make this stuff up when I yeah. come up with these ideas. Yeah. I, yeah. I literally read it someplace and he literally did this for the rest of his days. And he was never remembered until one historian looked back and said, whatever happened to this guy? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they said, oh my gosh, look what he wound up doing. Yeah. He spent the rest, you know, he, he was convicted of this thing when he was in his twenties and then spent the next 60 years of his life doing these amazing things for others. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea. It's going to be interesting. Again, <laughs> I think it's going to happen. No, <laughs> no, no. But if it did, we'd have one to talk about then. And, and, and that may inspire other horrible people to go and do good things. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but, but, uh, but you know what? And here's what this is. This is, this is a roadmap of redemption for anyone. Hey, mm -hmm. we, no one's perfect. We all have things we have done that we wish we didn't do it a certain way. And there's a way that we can get, get moved through it. Yeah. Own it. Be transparent, be open, and do all you can for uh, service of others with no ask for self. Mm -hmm. If people then become inspired to join you and be with you on your path, then it's their choice. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what we can all do for each other and ourselves. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.